It's D&D night. You have been looking forward to it all week. Last session, your party captured the big bad's right-hand man and questioned him, and tonight, you think there's a good chance that information is gonna lead you right to their hideout. But also, work sucked. You had a million meetings, and the guy in the cubicle next to you brought tuna for lunch. Or maybe you're fighting with your partner over something and you're feeling really down about it. Or there was a ton of traffic on the way to your DM's house, and you arrived 10 minutes late and pissed off. There are so many real-life obstacles that can make it hard hard to get into the right headspace for your fantasy escapism. So today I have got eight practical tips for setting aside whatever's going on in the real world and getting into character for D&D. Hey friends, Ginny D here, and today we are talking about eight quick tips to put yourself into your D&D character's boots of elven kind. I'm not talking about deep dive character building or anything, I'm talking easy things that you can do just in the 20 minutes right before your game to redirect your focus. I'm not gonna waste any time building it up, let's just get started. Number one, review your backstory. For the first few sessions, your backstory is probably gonna feel really fresh. At that point, it's really the only thing informing your character, so it's easy to keep in mind. But after 10 or 20, 20 or 50 sessions, if you're anything like me, it's gonna stop being at the front of your mind. As your experiences in game start building up, you might even find that you forget some of the things you originally wrote into your backstory. Now, in some ways, I think that's good. Your character should change over time as they experience new things and grow as a person. But if you need to recenter yourself and remember what your character was built on, I think it can be really useful to return to the foundational stuff that you put down on paper before you even rolled your first check. Take a minute before the session to remember how that history shaped your character and to recontextualize that information based on their recent experiences. Number two, use themed clothing or props. If you've ever struggled with insomnia, you might have been told to avoid doing any non-sleeping activities in your bed. Don't read, don't scroll Facebook, don't watch TV. This is because our minds are really good at associating objects or places with feelings. Building a strong relationship between your bed and sleeping can make it easier to feel sleepy in that environment. In the same way, you can associate your D&D character with an object, so that when you wear or use that object, your brain is conditioned to think about your character. This could mean that you put on fake elf ears, or a wizard hat, or a specific necklace for games. Maybe you've got a pen shaped like a dagger, and you use it whenever you're playing your rogue. Maybe you have a figure or a plush to represent your warlock's familiar. It might be even subtler, like a specific perfume or a pair of glasses. Whatever it is, if you start consistently using it when whenever you play your character and not for anything else, you'll start to build an association with it, so that whenever you put on those glasses or hold that pen, you find it easier to get into your character's head. Number three, answer some questions. Much of playing the role of your character is responding to situations, choices, and conversations from their perspective. The ability to do that is a muscle, and just like repeatedly exercising that muscle will make it stronger, it can also help to limber up with a few stretches before exercising. In this case, I would suggest answering some questions in character. Those questions could be silly and random, like what did you have for breakfast? Would you rather act in a play or complete an obstacle course? Or they could be deep and thought-provoking questions, like if you had one day to live, what would you do with your last moments? You don't have to come up with these questions on your own. You can Google character builder questions and get a bunch of lists designed for writers and role players, or you can even search for things like interview questions, questions to ask your partner, or conversation starters questions. You don't have to be married to your answer either, it's just an exercise. So even if later you decide that you should have answered that question differently, that's okay. It still served its purpose of getting you thinking from your character's point of view. Number four, use a key phrase. This is a common technique for actors when they're warming up. Try giving your character a catchphrase or a mantra, or even just picking a few quotes or sayings that call your character to mind. Not only can this help you transition into using a voice or an accent if you like to do that sort of thing, but it can also also serve as a ritual to remind you of what's important to your character, or how they like to present themselves. This might be a saying or motto that your character often says, like, let's not get ahead of ourselves, or why don't we try punching it, or is this some sort of human thing I'm supposed to understand? Or it could be a quote or a song that reminds you of your character, like Laura Bailey from Critical Role singing Popular from Wicked in her jester voice. It doesn't have to be something that you would actually say in game, as long as saying it out loud reminds you of how it feels to play the role of your character. 
Welcome back to Hashtag Sponsored, where we do the weirdest things that the people paying us will approve. Today, our guest is from the premier purveyor of high-end wooden gaming accessories for tabletop and board games. They craft everything from affordable dice vaults to high-end gaming tables, all in their Massachusetts workshop. That's right, it's Wormwood! So, Ginny, you're here today to talk about Wormwood's Roll With It collection. Yes, it is a beautiful selection of rolling trays and dice towers in Wormwood's core eight woods, from black walnut to Bolivian rosewood. Did you ch change? We all change, Ginny, if we're lucky. Let's roll the clip. Okay. Um, our magnetic dice tower is made with rare earth magnets, so you can easily disassemble it. It's a great match for our personal tray, a compact rolling tray that fits your dice tower and dice vault inside for easy transport. What the f- But that's not the only rolling tray Wormwood offers, right? Y yes, there's also the tabletop tray. This tray is wider and perfect for sharing with other players. Just like the personal tray, it has a stone-oiled leather rolling surface, and it's compatible with the magnetic dice tower and dice vault as well. Now, I understand Wormwood has something called the Craftsman's Promise. Can you explain what that is? The Craftsman's Promise, yes. If, if you're unsatisfied, if you're unsatisfied, for any reason, at any time, just reach out to Wormwood and they will repair, replace, or refund your purchase at no additional charge. They even pay for shipping! <laughs> this is Hashtag Sponsored. Tune in next week to learn about how I once visited the lost city of Atlantis in a dream and they told me I would someday be their queen. Number five, recap the last session. Just take a minute to go through what happened in the previous session and more specifically, how those things affected your character. Did anything come up that's relevant to their backstory or goals? Did they have any meaningful interactions with other party members or any NPCs? Is there anything that they'll wanna follow up on, discuss or resolve in the upcoming session? On a basic level, I think it's just good practice to review the events from the previous game just to make sure they're fresh in your mind. In some cases, what was a week or more for you was only minutes for your character, so a refresher can really help keep your head in the same place that your character's head would be. To make this even more effective, I would highly recommend taking 20 minutes after the session to write your own character-centric recap. This could be as simple as a voice memo on your phone where you quickly go over what happened, or as complex as an in-character journal entry that explores how the events of the session impacted your adventurer. Then you can listen back to that voice memo or read over that journal entry before the next game and be right back there in that moment. Number six, change your body language. You've heard of the Wonder Woman pose, right? It's where you plant your feet wide, put your hands on your hips, and it's supposed to make you feel more confident and powerful. In the same way, if you can identify a certain posture, gesture, or other body language that calls your character's personality to mind, you can physically adopt that pose or movement to remind your body that it's time to activate the character brain. Maybe your character is grouchy and closed off, so you fold your arms and frown. Maybe they're haughty and full of themselves, so you raise your chin so you can look down your nose at everyone. Maybe they're shy, so you round your shoulders and look at the ground. It might even be a single movement, like pushing your glasses up your nose or tossing your hair. If you ever need to refocus yourself throughout the game, you can just do this movement again as a reminder. Number seven, reread your traits. Similar to your backstory, it can be easy over the months or years of gameplay to forget some or even all of the character traits that you select when you're doing your initial build. Between personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, some might have become really core to your character's identity, while others might have fallen by the wayside. Taking just a few minutes before the game to review those elements can not just remind you of things you might have forgotten, but also help make it easier to contextualize any decisions you make during the session within those characteristics. You may not have necessarily forgotten that your character is a perfectionist, but you might not be actively thinking about it from session to session, when deciding how your character acts. By reviewing that section of your character sheet immediately before you start playing, you can keep those things in mind as you make choices and take actions at the table. Number eight, listen to music. As anyone who has cried to a Sarah Bareilles song will understand, music can be a very effective way to trigger emotions. Don't look at me like that, I'm a perfectly normal human being and I can listen to Manhattan anytime I want. That means if you can find some songs that remind you of your D&D characters, then you can just listen to them before a game. Personally, I really 
really like making whole character playlists, but you don't necessarily need to go that hard. You can just pick a single song that calls to mind your character's backstory or personality, and then just jam out to it in the car on the way to your session. You can even pick different songs from session to session based on what your character might be feeling or going through. They don't have to be a literal interpretation of your character's experience either. The lyrics don't have to have anything to do with your actual game. If Barracuda by Heart just feels like it is your Halfling Artificer's song, then great! You don't have to explain yourself to anyone. It is 100% all about the vibes. For a lot of us, D&D is an excuse to set aside whatever's going on in our real lives and escape into a world where we can solve our problems with swords and fireballs. I mean, I'm not saying you can't solve the problem of an annoying boss with a sword in real life, but other problems may spring from that kind of solution. The thing is, in order for escapism to work, you've got to be able to set aside the version of you who's annoyed with traffic or tired from a long day of meetings, and put on the version of you who is ready to slay a dragon and save a kingdom. With these eight quick and easy tools in your pocket, you will barely remember the smell of your coworker's tuna sandwich. If you want more in-depth advice on getting into character, you should check out my video about creating a character personality next. It goes into detail on four specific methods for taking a concept or backstory and turning it into a complete, fully fleshed out personality that you can put to use during your sessions. By the way, if you haven't been watching Headless, it is nearly October, which means that it's time to get spooky. It's a Sleepy Hollow inspired comedy web series and you can watch it for free on the Shipwreck YouTube channel. Plus, I'm in it, looking practically unrecognizable, unless you knew me in high school where I looked pretty much exactly like that. So many men. I'm not wearing my culling robes.